In this short video, we're going to have a look at uh, exceptions to the on or before rule in RTI, RTI getting started, and employee information. Exceptions to the on or before rule. HMRC will allow extra time in some cases, up to seven days, to report PAY information. Examples here typically relate to casual workers pay cash on the day or night of work where the pay is variable and it is impractical to report in real time. An example would be a crop picker paid in cash at the end of the day where their pay is based on how much they have picked. Or another example would be a casual worker in a pub at the end of the night. Additionally, the revenue will allow extra time to report payment of benefits or expenses subject to Class 1 NICs but not taxed under PAYE. For example, a director's home telephone bill paid by the employer. These can be reported on the next payroll run or 14 days after the end of the month the payment was made in, whichever is the earlier. Getting started. HMRC wrote to a further 1.4 million employers last October as part of their RTI awareness campaign. The Revenue planned to send follow-up letters in February 2013 confirming when employers are expected to start making RTI submissions. <clears throat> the first step is data validation and payroll alignment. This process is known as Employer Alignment Submission or EAS. This checks the data on HMRC's records against that on your payroll software. Once you have received confirmation that the EAS has been received and successfully processed, then the first full payment submission or FPS can be submitted. Let's have a look at the key employee data in detail, which must be accurate and up to date. For each employee, you must provide the following. One, National Insurance Number. If the National Insurance Number is not available, you must complete the full postal address. 2. The Passport Number, if this is available. 3. The Title, Mr, Mrs, Ms, etc. 4. Surname or Family Name. It's advisable to check the spelling of this name against an official document like a passport or a driver's license. 5. Full name or given name, not familiar or nicknames. Six, initials, full name or initials must be completed. Seven, second name or given name. Take care here because some people are known by their second name rather than their first name. Eight, date of birth. This must be completed in the correct form. The day, the month and the full year of birth. Nine, current gender, fairly self-explanatory, 10 and 11, address and UK postcode, 12, foreign country, applies where you employ a foreign national, and finally, 13, normal working hours, this is a new requirement, and this information is essential for the operation of universal credits. You need to give an indication as to whether the normal working hours are less than 16 hours, between 16 and 30 hours, in excess of 30 hours or other. 